For this example, let's check if the function in front of us is continuous. If, if it's not continuous, let's classify points of discontinuities. This is a piecewise function and it can be continuous. This is how I look at the piecewise functions. I call the first part of it as equation number one and the second as equation number two because those are pieces. Then I draw my input line x-axis here and I put the suspicious points in the list. Usually I just see them right away, but in this case they even gave it to you that it's zero and four is the breaking point. Uh, something is happening at zero and something is happening at four. What a line of this piecewise function would you use when you work with inputs that are less than zero? That will be the first line. So let's put it here. Same thing on the right from zero and after four. Whatever is not zero and not four will be uh, used as equation number one. Now, there's nothing happening at four. That means there's a hole at four or some kind of discontinuity right away. So now we already know that it's not continuous at four. But at zero, we have a value. At zero, it, it is five. And we call it equation number two. So let's be consistent and put equation number two here. And it is just a number five. So I want to check continuity at x equals to zero and four. Is it continuous or not? Well, to do that, I need to figure out if the limit exists at 0 and at 4, and then if that limit matches with f at 0 and f at 4. So, definition of continuity, if you don't remember, is f at the point a, which is x equals 0 or x equals 4, must match with the limit at that point when x approaches a. Well, not only 4 is already point discontinuity because f at 4 does not exist right away, but also we're going to find now that it is a vertical asymptote. So, step 1. x equals 4 definitely is a point of discontinuity. Point of discontinuity, which means the function is not continuous at that point. Why? Because, bc is because f at 4 is not even defined not defined there's none none of this notation tells us what is happening at 4 now let's check what is happening at 0 because f of 0 exists x equals to 0 I want to figure out if the limit as x approaches 0 of the function exists to figure out that you know what to do, right? We need to figure out if the right limit exists, if the left limit exists, which is limit from the left, then if they are, if they give you the same value, then you can conclude that limit at the point exists and it is the same value. So we already agreed that when x is not zero, we're using equation number one. So when I'm writing down f of x here, I know that since x approaches 0 but it's not, it is not 0, I will be using equation number 1, not equation number 2. Thus, now I can substitute the chosen line from the piecewise function, which is 6 over x plus negative 5x plus 24. x is multiplied by x minus 4. Maybe put brackets if you want to visually see that here is your limit. I don't really know what is happening in 0. If I plug 0 right now, I will have 6 over 0 and then 24 over 0. Doesn't look good at all. Let's create common denominator and proceed with calculations. The common denominator will be what? Correct. x is multiplied by x minus 4. Then the first term, which is 6, should be multiplied by x minus 4. And it's going to be 6 multiplied by x minus 4 plus, open parenthesis not to mess up the signs, negative 5x plus 24. Continue. I will move this notation a little bit lower. 
and continue to the next line. So we're going to have a limit as x approaches 0 from the right. Denominator, don't have to simplify it or distribute it, just keep it as it is. But let's distribute the numerator. 6x minus 24 comes from the first term. So we have 6x minus 24 minus 5x plus 24. Yay! Negative 24 and positive 24 give you 0. The limit becomes x, because 6x minus 5x is 1x, divided by x times x minus 4. I know you really want to simplify this x, but you first need to check if it's legal to do. You can only do it if x is not 0, because you cannot cancel out zeros. But it's exactly what it says here. x is not 0 when we are working with this equation. Thus, it's legal for me and for you to divide by x, because x is not 0. So the final 4 of this limit will be when x is not 0, 1 over x minus 4. Now we can substitute 0 and find the limit from the right, and it is negative 1 quarter. Nice! So that will speed up the process for the limit from the right uh, from the left because the function is the same i will also plug zero into one over x minus four and get the same result since left limit end up to be the same as the right limit that gives me the right to say that the limit as x approach zero of f of x exists and it is negative one quarter so one of the parts of definition of continuity is done. We have the limit, it exists, and it is negative one quarter. The only thing left to check is that f at zero is also negative one quarter. But is it true? What is f at zero? Let's look at the piecewise function again. f at zero uses equation number two, which is just a constant five. At zero, this function jumps, or basically has a cut out hole and goes up into the number five as the output so i can say but f at zero is five which most importantly is not negative one quarter thus f at zero did not meet with the limit of f of x when x approaches zero and the sketch will look like so. When I had 0 over here, from the left, the function was going to the... Uh, from the left, the function was going to the height y equals negative 1 quarter. From the right, it was going to the same height, negative 1 quarter. But at 0, it ended up to be a hole, and the value at 0 is 5. So we have answer for this point. Answer. x equals to 0 is a whole. It's in official terminology, even in different languages. And it's also called a removable discontinuity. A removable discontinuity. And it's called like so, as you can guess, because we can remove it. It's not uh, very creative. So, by removing it, we, it means it can be fixed. Can be fixed. After all, what we need to do to fix it is to fill in the hole. So, we need to redefine this point 5 to be negative 1 quarter. How to fill it? How to fix the hole? We need to redefine f at 0 to be what? Whatever the limit is. The limit f of x as x approaches 0. And that is negative 1 quarter. So the answer for this part will be that f at 0 must be, should be, negative 1 quarter in order in order 
to have continuity at f of zero. I also have another quick note to make. Note, what is happening at the x equals to 4? Well, if you look at this simplified limit I just had over here, what happens when x is 4? In this case, we have a vertical asymptote. So I can even sketch it here for you. When x is 4, the function is growing or decaying up or down infinitely. And that is called a vertical asymptote. So at x equals to 4, and it cannot be 4, so let me mention this way. The limit as x approaches 4 from both sides, it has some kind of infinity. f of x equals 2. Limit x approaches 4 of 1 over 1 minus, no, x. x minus 4 will give you plus or minus infinity. And that's a whole different story to check which one it is. And actually it will be plus infinity from 4 from the right and minus infinity from 4 to the left. And that is a vertical asymptote. So from the right, the function is growing up forever and from the left, it's going down forever. And that is uh, information for another problem. I just wanted to make sure you don't have any questions left about this problem. If you do have any questions, look up other problems in your homework and in the book. Good job for working hard.